The Challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you husky! Gold! Gold! Discovered in the Yukon! A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, King, battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston, with his big dog, King, beside him, Watch the passengers come down the gangplank of the Bonanza Bell docked at Dawson City. He was looking for a certain person whom he had no trouble identifying. As she disembarked, Miss Emma Scheffler stood out from the rest like a tall, neat pine tree in a forest of scrub oak. She was immaculate and self-sufficient, a bit past middle age. And the men all tipped their hats respectfully as she left the boat first. Come on, King. As the Mountie walked toward her... He heard her parting words to the captain. And that's a fine trip. You're smart to get us up this river and have all those trips and turns. Thank you, Miss Shefflin. I wish I could compliment your cook the way I can you. Can't say that I ever ate worse meals. His hotcakes tasted like fried shoe leather and his pie. Oh. <laughs> Guess the Bonanza Bell could stand a woman's touch in the galley. You should have given Sam some of your recipes. I'd never trust my recipes with Sam. I wonder where that nephew of mine is. He, he was supposed to meet us. Oh, hello, Sergeant Preston. How are you, Captain? Uh, Miss Scheffler, this is Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. How do you do? Oh, is that dog of yours dangerous? Heavens, he's big. The king won't hurt you. He's very friendly with people he likes. I certainly hope he likes me. I, uh... Came down here to meet you, Miss Scheffler. Is something wrong with that? Your nephew is, uh, uh, he couldn't get here. We'll get going as soon as we get your baggage. As Sergeant Preston walked along the muddy, unpaved street with Emma Scheffler, he wondered how to break the bad news of Bob Scheffler's death. Emma looked about her curiously. I certainly never saw a place like this one. This mud is ankle deep. I hope Bob has a nice cup of tea waiting for me. Oh, it's chilly. It's uh, quite a distance out to his cabin. Why don't we just drop in here and have a cup? It's Jim Peters' place. Mm, I'd like the tea, but I don't like the name of his place. The City Plate. It's the only place open at this hour. Step in, Miss Scheffler. Not as bad as it sounds. Mm. Your dog coming in, too? Oh, yes. King goes wherever I do. Hello there, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Jim. We'd like some hot tea. I'll heat it up for you right away. Heat it up? You mean he doesn't make it fresh? <laughs> Sit down here, please, Miss Shefflin. Oh, this table is dirty. I, I'd better wipe it off with my handkerchief. Miss Shefflin, I, uh, I have some bad news for you. I didn't want to tell you there at the boat. I knew from the way you were acting that you had something on your mind. That's why I came in here with you. Is Bob sick? You know I came up here to take care of him and young Teddy after Bob's wife died. Bob caught diphtheria too. Uh, caught it from his wife. You mean he... You mean... Teddy's been left alone. Bob died. We tried to reach her by telegraph, but she'd already left. Bob died? Oh, no... I'm awfully sorry. I'll do everything I can to help you. Oh, I'll be all right in a minute. I... It's the shock, of course. Young Teddy is staying with some friends here in town. Poor child. Losing both mother and father so suddenly. He'll be very glad to see you. He's been looking forward to it. I'd have brought him to the boat to meet you, but I didn't want to talk about this in front of him. No, oh, I... I'm glad you didn't. I love that child. I was living with Bob and his wife when Teddy was born, and I loved him like my own. When they brought him up here, I, I was beside myself with worry. That's why I started here just as soon as I heard that his mother had died. Teddy's a big favorite around town. I can't wait to see him. I was afraid you were going to tell me something had happened to him. My nephew's death is bad enough, but I... 
I don't think I could have stood it if something had happened to Teddy. Well, here's your tea. Oh, uh, Miss Scheffler, this is Jim Wells. Howdy, ma'am. How, how do you do? I can't figure what's wrong with that tea. Funny looking, ain't it? Why, it looks the way your tea always looks, Jim. Oh. Three shades darker than strong coffee. Well, if you don't like it, just throw it away and I won't charge you a thing. I don't know why I ever started this business. I'm getting thin because I can't eat my own cooking. It's terrible. You'd better let me taste this first, Miss Sheffler. <coughs> oh, Jim, that's the worst you've ever made. Don't <laughs> drink it, Miss Sheffler. Oh, dear, a cup of tea would have helped. Where is your tea, Mr. Wells? Would you mind if I made some? Go right ahead, ma'am. It's back there in the kitchen. Is there any some boiling water ready? Yes, ma'am, right there on the stove. I'll be back in a minute with it, Sergeant. Who is she, Sergeant? She's Bob Shuffler's aunt. I just told her about Bob's death. I think she's glad to get a chance to be alone for a few minutes. I'm glad you let her make the tea. Do you think she'll live up here with young Teddy? I don't know, Jim. Bob didn't leave any money. If she has enough to take Teddy back to the States with her, I imagine that's what she'll do. <clears throat> I wish she'd buy this restaurant of mine instead. Huh? I ain't no good at running it and can't get anybody to cook for me, and I don't know much about it. How'd you ever happen to buy it? Oh, don't be silly, Sergeant. I didn't buy it. I won it in a poker game. Oh? I'm trying to sell it to get enough money to go prospecting. Well, there's a fortune in this business, Jim. Well, it's dangerous for anyone like me. Last night, the boys done near lynched me when they tasted the stew I gave them. <laughs> Here's the tea. I think we'll like this a little better. I brought a cup for you, too, Mr. Wells. Oh, it even smells like tea. Mm. Say, that's the best tea I ever tasted. Mm. Uh, gosh, I ain't had tea like that since I left home ten years ago. No, sir, not even my mother could make it like that. Now, there's a trick to making tea just like every other kind of cooking. Well, gee, ma'am, you mean that you can cook other things as good as you can make tea? I love to cook. Uh, we'd better hurry now, Sergeant. I'm anxious to see Teddy. It was two days later that Sergeant Preston again talked to M. Scheffler, who had moved into her nephew's cabin with young Teddy. She looked troubled and worried. I don't like to bother you with my troubles, Sergeant. Why, I told you I wanted to help all I could. You see, your nephew was a very good friend of mine, and I'm fond of young Teddy. Well, it's a question of money. I guess you know Bob didn't leave any. There's this cabin, but I couldn't get enough money selling it to get Teddy and me back home. I had a talk with Jim Wells yesterday, Miss Shuffler. Jim Wells? The owner of that awful restaurant? That's right. Jim had an idea that I thought might interest you. He did? He wondered if you'd be interested in going into partnership with him, running the restaurant. But I have no money. You don't need any. If someone doesn't help Jim soon, he's going to go out of business and lose the place anyway. Now, if you could take charge of the cooking, Jim figures you could build up the business and make some money. What do you think? I like to cook, but I've never had any experience running a restaurant. Well, I'm sure you could do it. If the men here in town ever got a taste of real home cooking, I'm sure you'd have more business than you could handle. I could try it. If I thought I could make money enough to get Teddy back to the States... I'm I... sure you could. You and Teddy could move into the rooms back at the restaurant. Jim wants to make enough money for a grub steak, and as soon as he gets it, you'd probably have the restaurant all to yourself. I'll try it, Sergeant. It's kind of Mr. Wells to give me the chance. I'll tell him then. Well, King, I guess we'd better be on our way. Teddy will be disappointed that he didn't see you. He's out playing somewhere with his pup. Oh, that's Teddy now. Hello, Teddy. How are you, King, old boy? That pup of yours is growing fast, isn't he? Maybe he'll grow as big as pig. Teddy. <laughs> yes, sir? Uh, Teddy, how would you like to move into town and live in the rooms behind Mr. Jim Wells' restaurant? Why would we do that? Mr. Wells wants me to go into partnership with him. We think it would be nice if the whole town could taste your aunt's cooking, Teddy. What do you think? See, if, if you had that restaurant, you could make pies and cakes and everything, couldn't you? <laughs> I think I could. Oh, I think it would be wonderful. <laughs> well, Sergeant, that settles it. You tell Mr. Wells he has a partner. It was young Teddy who renamed the restaurant Aunt M's Place. As word of M's cooking spread, it was soon the most popular eating place in town. 
and money poured in in exchange for M's fine stews and pies and biscuits. About a month had passed, and Jim Wells and M. Scheffler were counting up their profits. I never saw the like of it. We could charge twice as much for everything the men would still eat here, Em. No, we are just going to make a fair profit. I wouldn't feel right about overcharging hungry men. Well, you're right, but Em, I just can't sit back and take the profits from this place and let you do all the work. The boys are just teasing you too much. Pay no attention to them. Well, I, I had sort of an idea. An idea? If I could take all the profits we made this month for a grub stake and go out and do a little prospecting, maybe someday we'd be partners in a gold mine. Yes, that's a good idea. Would you really like to do it? You mean you'd be for it, Em? Of course I would. It might mean that someday Teddy would be rich. And he's the one I have to think of. Well, Ned Baker wants me to go with him. And if it's all right with you, I'll do it. I can run this place alone now that I'm getting that Indian girl's help. Donna in the kitchen. Uh, now, you just take everything that you need, Jim. And I'll keep this place going in case you need more. Oh, Em, you're a fine woman. I... I wish you... Uh, yes, uh, Jim? I... I ain't got the right to say it now. I'll tell you when I make my gold strike. The summer months passed swiftly for M. Scheffler after Jim Wells left. The business continued to grow, and though she heard nothing from Jim, she kept his share of the profits for him. And then the fateful day arrived, the day that M. Scheffler was never to forget. It was Sunday morning in midwinter, and the excitement began when young Teddy, walking toward his aunt's restaurant, saw a dog team stop in front of it. A loose blanket was flapping in the wind, and Teddy's dog, Frisky, rushed at it playfully and tugged at it. Frisky, stop! You silly dog! Get away from there, you mutt! Get, I say! You big bully, you! Don't you dare kick my dog! I'll punch your stomach in! Hey, you little brat, quit it! You won't kick my dog! All right, you ass what? Hey, don't hit him, Spike! Hey, he needs a lesson! Oh. Teach you to hit your parents. Look out, Spike, there's a big dog. Hey, hey. get away from me, you cur. Spike King, down below, what's going on here? He kicked Frisky. Get away from me, Mountie, or I'll... <coughs> Missed. Well, I won't. <coughs> I saw you hitting this boy. <coughs> I... I was just teaching this kid a few manners. You kicked Frisky, you Never bitch. mind, Teddy. I'll take care of this. Get moving, you two. We're staying right here. We're going in that restaurant to eat. Oh, no, you're not. My NM won't feed people like you. I'll tell her what you did. You'll better find another place to eat. Get going. Come on inside, Daddy. Come on, Spike. They don't serve drinks in there anyway. Yeah. Mush! Mush there! Frisky isn't hurt, Teddy. Come on in, Frisky. Bring King and two sergeants. All right. Come on, fella. All the excitement about. A man kicked Frisky and I hit him in the stomach. Teddy. And then he hit me and King saw him and jumped at him. We got rid of a couple of unpleasant customers for you, Aunt Em. Oh, dear. Are you all right, Teddy? Oh, I'm all right, Aunt Em, but, but will you look at Frisky's leg, Sergeant? Oh, uh, Do you think that man hurt him? Let's have a look, Frisky. Easy, boy. No, he's not hurt, Teddy. Good. Come on, Frisky. I'll feed you. Thank you, Sergeant. I'm glad you and King happened to come along. Those men were rough customers. They just come to town, I guess. M. Scheffler! M. Scheffler! Why, it's Ned Baker. Where's Jim? Well, hello, Ned. Hello, Sergeant. Jim didn't come with me. He hurt his leg and couldn't travel. But oh, look no. what I brought for you, M. <laughs> Bags of gold. We hit it. We made a strike. You and Jim Wells and me, we're all going to be rich. Whoopee! You mean Jim Wells sent this gold to me? He sure did. He, uh, he sent this letter to you. Here it is. Thank you. Jim would have brought the gold down himself, but he busted an ankle and couldn't walk. Oh. We needed more supplies, so I came alone. Oh. Poor Jim, he, he wanted to see your face when you got it. Well, by the looks of her face right now, there was something important in the letter, too. Why, it's... Uh, I, I know I, what's uh, in the letter. Uh, Jim told me. He's asking her to marry him. Oh. Oh. That's why she's blushing. Oh, oh. I think that's wonderful. You're, you're going to accept, ain't you? Why, I... I of course but, uh, she's going to accept. Oh. You and Jim are both very lucky, Aunt Em. You're going to be rich. There's a lot of gold here. I just can't believe it. Oh, I'll have to put it right in the bank. Why, you can't do that today. It's Sunday. You'd better get it out of sight before your customers start coming in. If you have to keep it here for the night, you'd better not let people know about it. 
I'll take care of it. I can trust Una. And I'll get the gold to the bank the first thing in the morning. Neither Aunt M nor Sergeant Preston had thought about old Ned Baker, who hurried to the Gold Nugget Cafe to celebrate his new riches. As the day wore on, Spike Davis and Curly Nolan began to get more and more interested as Ned became more loquacious. Yes, sir. We're all going to be mighty rich. That gold I left with Aunt M this morning is just a starter. Uh, who's Aunt M? I told you about her. Oh, no, you didn't. Well, she's the one who's Jim's partner. Ain't you ever eaten at Aunt M's place? Well, that's a place we stopped in front of this morning, Spike, where that kid and his pup were. Oh, yeah. You say, uh, this Aunt M is a partner? She sure is. She won't have to cook very much longer. She could quit now if she wanted to. I left $10,000 worth of gold there this morning. And that's only part of what she'll get. Hey, <laughs> lucky woman. Is she got a husband? No, sir. And don't you think you can marry her either. Lots of men have asked her. She's a fine woman. She can cook. But she's going to marry Jim. Uh, does she live at the restaurant? Sure she does. Runs the whole place alone. With just an Indian girl to help her. Hey, <laughs> smart woman and him. Here the drinks, boys. Oh, <laughs> This one's on me, Ned. Drink it. Well, I... I better be careful, boys. Remember, I've been up in the wilderness. I, I ain't used to it. What of it? You got them to worry you? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I, uh... I guess I better postpone eating at Aunt M's till tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Darkness had fallen, and the last customer had left Aunt M's place. Spike and Curly stood across the street watching as Aunt M finished sweeping the floor. Do you think she still has a gold there in the restaurant? The bank wasn't open today. There's no place else she could put it. As soon as she starts pulling down the blind on the door, we'll go in before she locks up. You think this is safe, Spike? That Monty's a good friend of hers. He might drop around. We gotta take that chance. We can tie her and the kid, get the gold, and leave. Our dog team's all ready. And nobody knows us here in town. We'll be in 40 Mile tomorrow night. Yeah, that old man, Ned, if he happens to wake He's up, He's dead Spike... to the world. He won't wake up till morning. <laughs> and I doubt that he'll remember us much. Hey, he's coming to the door now. Let's go. Yeah. I'll tell her we want some supper. That'll keep her from yelling until we get in. I'm sorry, but we're closed for the night. All right. You mean we can't have supper? Not this evening. Yeah, then that's the man who kicked Presky. Pull that oh. shade down, Curly, and lock the door. Sure. Why, what's the meaning of all this? You men get out of here. You do what Aunt M says. You can't. Grab the kid, me. Curly. Come here, you. Let go of me. Let go of oh, me. Don't you dare hurt no. that child. Let go of him. Just a minute. Take your hands off me. Stop it, I say. Sit down here and be quiet. Oh. Save yourself a lot of trouble. You let Aunt M alone. Stick a gag in his mouth to keep him quiet. No, stop. Help him. Don't hurt him, please. What do you want? We want those bags of gold that Ned brought you this morning. Just give them to us and there won't be any trouble. I can't give it to you. Half of that gold belongs to Jim Wells. It isn't mine. We don't care who owns it. We want it. I won't give it to you. Well, then. I'm going to have to tie you up while we look for it, I guess. Hey, Spike. Sounds as if there's somebody in the kitchen. Who's out there? It's Una, the little Indian girl who helps me. Don't frighten her. She doesn't know anything about the gold. Curly, go back and look. See if she's telling the truth. Sure. I'd advise you two to get out of here. I promised Sergeant Preston the Mountie that I'd give him one of the pies I baked today. He'll be coming here to get it any minute. She's right, Spike. There's an Indian girl back there washing dishes. Hey, what'd she say about Amani? She said he's coming here to get a pie. <laughs> I think she's lying. But, Spike, we can't take a chance. We don't have to. We'll send the pie to Sergeant Preston so he won't have to come here for it. Send it? Send it with the Indian girl. <laughs> I'm sure Aunt Anne will be glad to do it to keep her nephew from being hurt. But she might tell Amani about it. She doesn't even know we're here. Come on, Aunt Anne. Get in there and tell her to take the pie to Sergeant Preston. We'll be standing right here at the door. And if you tell her anything else, there's no telling what'll happen to your nephew here. Please don't hurt Teddy. We won't if you behave yourself. Now go on in and send that girl to the Mountie with a pie. And tell her she don't have to come back here. She can go straight home. And I'll be watching you through the door. 
you try anything funny, remember Curly has a knife pointing right at your nephew's throat. I'll tell her. I'll send her away. Now, remember. I'm listening and watching you. I'll remember. I promise. If you don't hurt Teddy, I'll just send her out with the pie. Una. Yes? You can leave the rest of those dishes. I want to send a pie to Sergeant Preston at the police barracks. Uh, do you know where that is? Me, no. This pie will be nice for him. Wrap a towel around it and take it right away. Me bring Pan back? No, he can keep it until tomorrow. You can go straight home. I won't leave you until tomorrow. Mm, me do. And hurry, Una. Go right now. Use the back door. Me go now. I'll see you tomorrow, Una. Good night. Good night. <laughs> yeah, nice work, Aunt Em. Now we can take our time getting the gold. Where is it? I'm not going to tell you. The gold isn't all mine, and I'll say nothing more. I guess we can find it. But this restaurant is going to look pretty bad by the time we get through ransacking it. You could save yourself a lot of work. I'll say nothing more. Sit down in this chair. I'm going to tie you to it and keep you out of trouble. <laughs> Very well. Curly. Yeah? Start looking for that gold. You take that side of the room and I'll take this one. Pull everything out of the cupboards and look under the counters. If it ain't in here, it'll be in the kitchen. Sergeant Preston sat in the office of the police barracks reading, with King lying quietly beside him. The dog rose as he heard a timid knock on the door. Uh, quiet, King. Sergeant Preston. Oh, hello, Luna. Come in. Me bring you pie. A pie? Miss Scheffler, she send you pie. Uh, here. Well... Why would you send me a pie? I left there just two hours ago, and I had a big piece of pie for supper. Me not know. She say, bring you pie. Oh, that's nice of her. Thank her for me, Una. Me go now. Good night. And thanks for bringing it over. Good night. <laughs> oh, you smell the pie, King? And I suppose you like some. What if this is a pie? It's a heavy. Yes, it is. We better have a piece before the rest of the boys get back. Won't be a crumb left after they're through with it. <laughs> Just a second, boy, to get my knife. Here we are. Now, wait. Wait a minute. <laughs> Sorry, King. We don't eat pie tonight, but we do have some work to do. Come on, King. We're leaving. Back in Aunt M's place, the scene was one of complete confusion. The contents of every drawer were strewn over the floor. Tables were upset, and flour and sugar and vegetables littered the kitchen. Aunt Em sat rigidly in her chair, her lips held in a firm line of determination, as Spike towered over her, his face livid with rage. Hey, you listen to me. This is your last chance. You give me one more false lead, and I'll blow your blasted brains out if you got any. Where's the gold? Maybe it's under the floor. We're not going to start tearing up the floor. Now, where is it? It sure ain't in the kitchen. I looked everywhere. Did you look in a stove? Yeah, nothing but pies up where the warming place is. There's nothing in the oven. Take the gag out of that kid's mouth, Curly. He might yell. If he does, smack him over the mouth, but take it out. Sure. Teddy doesn't know anything about the gold. We'll soon oh. find out. There. You big... Now he can talk. Oh. All right, kid. You see this gun? If you don't tell me where your aunt hid that gold, I'll blow her brains out. Come on now, where is it? Please don't hurt Aunt Em. I won't if you show me where the gold is hidden. But I don't know. I didn't see her hiding. He doesn't know. Please let him alone. Kid, if you don't tell us, it's going to be too bad for all of you. You'll even go out to the doghouse and shoot that pup you're so crazy about. You'll shoot him first. Maybe that'll show you we mean business. <laughs> don't hurt him. Please, I don't know where the gold is. If I knew, I'd tell you. Please tell the man, Em, before they hurt you. Yeah, I guess maybe the kid doesn't know. Oh, she's the only one that can tell us. It won't do you any good to shoot me. Then you'd never find the gold. Ah. There's another way we can make you talk. Lift that kid's chair over here in front of her, Curly. Oh. Sure. Come on, kid. Come on. <laughs> there he is. Now. <laughs> we'll see if watching your nephew being hurt won't loosen your tongue. Don't hurt Teddy, please. You got the right idea, Spike. This will make it talk. Oh. 
As Sergeant Preston and King approached Aunt Em's place, Lamonte saw the drawn window shade that covered the small glass window in the front door. Quietly, he circled to the back and tried the back entrance, but found it locked. He listened carefully at the door. Nobody in the kitchen. <laughs> it was then that the sergeant noticed the small opening covered with hide that served as a window. Carefully, he slit it with his knife and peered in. Kitchen's all upset. Come on, King. I'm going to put you in there to guard the back. I'll break in the front door. Come on, fella. This window's small, but I think it would squeeze through. There you go, fella. Quiet now. On guard, King. On guard. Quietly, the great dog jumped to the floor and picked his way cautiously through the litter of broken glass and dishes to the door that led to the restaurant. The door was partly open, and King growled softly as he heard the voice of Spike in the adjoining room. I'll give you one more chance to tell me. Don't, please don't. I'll see you hurting. Don't tell me. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Quickly, the big dog pushed open the door, and in a flash leaped at Spike, whose arm was raised to strike Teddy. <laughs> The weight of the great dog threw Spike to the floor where he lay helplessly with a big animal standing over him. Curly, in a panic, threw the bolt and held the front door shut, shouting to Spike as he did so. Let's get out of here, Spike. Get some money, dog. Not so fast, you. Get back in there. Sergeant Preston, I'm so glad you got here. So am I, Adam. Keep your hands up, you. I haven't got a gun. No, you haven't. But I'll take this knife. The other one has a gun, Sergeant. Spike has a gun. I'll get it. It's here on the floor. Get up, Spike. Let him up, King. All right, boy. Wait. Stand over there beside your partner. Watch them, King. Don't either of you men move. I'll untie you, Aunt Em. I was so afraid you wouldn't come. There you are. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. Now get Teddy loose. They tied him, too. These are the same men who kicked Christy, Sergeant. Huh? King knew they were bad. That's why he jumped Spike when he was going to hurt me. There. You're free, Teddy. I was so afraid you wouldn't understand that I needed help. Oh. How did you know we were in trouble, Sergeant? Well, Teddy, I guess you've heard of four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie. But did you ever hear of a pie made of gold dust? Gold dust? Those pies! That's where the gold was! I got worried about keeping all that gold here, Sergeant. So I put it in pie tins and covered it with pie crust. It was a smart idea, Aunt Em. But only a good cook would have thought of it. All those pies right under our noses. If you hadn't opened that front door. I thought door. the money was coming in the back with his dog. All right, you two. You're under arrest. We're going back to headquarters. I think you'll be safe now, Aunt Em. I can't tell you how grateful I am. I don't know how to thank you. Oh, you don't? Well, I'll tell you how, Aunt Em. If King and I should happen to be here around dinner time tomorrow, would you please see that we got a pie from the right shelf? We like your regular pies much better than the ones made of gold, don't we, King? <laughs> All right, King. Watch them, boy. This case is closed. Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is brought to you each week at this time, and all names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. Fred Foy speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. Coming up tonight over most of these same ABC stations, a case of mystery on Ross Dolan Detective, the popular thrill show starring screen actor William Gargan as tough private eye Ross Dolan. And for a fast game of crime busting, there's nothing so exciting as a half hour with Mr. Dolan every Saturday night. For instance, take one case he was on. It seemed like a quiet evening for Ross. He was taking it easy. Then suddenly he found himself mixed up with a fabulous collection of stolen jewelry. As if that weren't enough to occupy the attention of any hard-working detective, a beautiful girl photographer entered the scene. A wonderful distraction, of course, but this particular skirt, as Ross called her, meant trouble, and she did cause a great amount of it before the case was closed. For high-powered adventure, don't miss Ross Dolan, Detective. On the air tonight, over most of these...